All righty. So we're reviewing some of the stuff that we talked about in prior weeks. Uh, one of those is our song setup feature. And uh, so w we had a question from a student that was asking, well, what if I happen to not like the song setup? What if I've, I've selected, in this case, sunny side of the street, and I'm on an easy 10 here. I hit select. And it sets up the whole instrument, right? That's what song setup does. It'll set up the whole instrument for uh, whatever song I've picked. Okay, so as I touch my intro chord there, here's what it sounds like. Okay, and, and I do happen to like that setup, but let's pretend I don't like it. One of the first things that you want to do is figure out, well, what is it about the setup that you don't like? Okay, it's probably going to be one of, of maybe two or three things. You either don't like the style that it's chosen. In other words, what music style did song setup select for you? You also may not like the tempo. That's probably going to be the biggest one. You might want to slow that tempo down a lot of the time. Or you don't like the melody sounds. Okay, so let's pick apart uh, each one individually. Of course, the tempo is the easiest one. If you think, well, I, I love the setup, it sounds great, but I can't play it at 101 beats a minute. That should be easy, right? After we're four weeks or so into this class, you should hopefully know that you can turn the tempo down and maybe play it like this. Okay, that's pretty slow, but, you know, whatever tempo works for you. Okay. Now, a little bit of, uh, maybe a little bit more challenging would be, what if I don't like the style or I don't like the melody sound? Okay, melody sound, if you don't like the melody sound, there's one very easy fix that you can do. Okay, so let's, let's pretend you've already adjusted your tempo. You, you do like the music style, but you want to change what melody sounds are there. Okay. Um, in the case of the EZ-10, this is a very easy fix. Okay, I can touch the button that says Style Setup. And I should say that this applies to any instrument above the Easy 10 as well. So if you have like a Fanfare Journey, Inspire, Sterling, all, all the large ones, anything with style setup or rhythm preset, you just touch that button and it's going to give you different sounds. All right, so let me go back. I'm going to select Sunny Side of the Street. Here's the song setup. Okay, so let's say I want something else. I touch Style Setup. So it gave me jazz guitar instead of uh, jazz organ. Now, if you happen to have the numbered buttons in the middle, keep in mind that every button, every number is going to give you different sounds. So let's say I wanted flute. And so, of course, it gives me a different sound on the lower keyboard as well. So if you don't like your melody sound and you happen to have those setups, those style setups, you can just pick any one of those and that'll give you different sounds and keep the style that the song setup has already picked out for you. Okay. Now, if you don't have those style setup buttons in the middle, right, everybody will have either rhythm preset or style setups. So you'll at least have the one option, right, which... Sometimes it gives you different sounds than song setup, but sometimes it's the same. Now, in, in that case that I just showed you, it happened to be different, but you may pick out a song setup. I don't know if I can just by chance pick one out. Let's try Marianne. So that gives me marimbas and guitar. If I touch style setup, yeah, that does change it. But you may run into some where um, if you touch your style setup button, it actually gives you the same melody sounds as the song setup. Okay. But it, it certainly if you go into the numbered buttons in the middle, those will change for you. All right. But let's pretend you only have that one. Let's say you're on an easy four, for example. You have style setup, but you don't have the numbered buttons in the middle. 
then you're going to have to utilize what we talked about last week. You're going to have to go over here and you're going to have to select your own sounds. Okay, and again, we're talking about if you used song setup, you, you did like the music style, but you wanted to change those melody sounds. Then you have to go and manually select, well, what, what sound would I like? You know, let's stick with the uh, song we were using, um, Sunny Side of the Street. Let's say I, I don't like jazz guitar and clarinet. Okay, I really have to pretend hard here because I, I love those sounds. But for the sake of showing, let's say I wanted, uh, you know, I'm a little biased towards the piano. Let's say I wanted a grand piano. I'd have to touch piano right now. And then I, I may have to select, you know, grand piano. Okay, and now if I touch anything down here, I have the same thing, right? So if I wanted to select two melody sounds, right, one for the upper and one for the lower, I'd have to do what we talked about last week, which would be touch and hold, and then select my second one. Right, and I still have that same music style. So hopefully you remember uh, how to do that. We did talk about that last week, about touching and holding the first one and then selecting the second one. And hopefully you can see there, maybe if I get a little closer, um, that the secondary sound is flashing. It's blinking, right? So that one's going to the lower keyboard. And, of course, if you need a more detailed explanation, here's a second plug for our YouTube channel, right? You can go to youtube.com slash Fletcher Music Centers and review my class, uh, Brian's Beginner's Basics, from last week. All right, now the other thing, I'm going to wrap this up because I'm <laughs> rambling a little bit for one question, but hopefully you guys find this useful. Um, if you, Let's say you like the melody sounds that Song Setup picks for you, but you don't like the music style. You want to change that instead. Okay, it's basically the same idea, right? If I select Sunny Side of the Street or whatever um, Song Setup I've chosen, and I do like... Right? I like that, but I want to change the style. Well, then you just have to figure out, well, what style would I ra rather play than what they selected? Now, if you have a display screen that tells you what the style is, so the Easy 10 or above, will tell you this style is called Jazz Guitar. That's under Traditional and Guitarist. All right. Let's say I wanted to do a big band version of that song. Well, big band sounds are, or big band style, I mean, is under Standards and Full Band. Okay, so I can touch standards and full band, and if that's the only uh, thing that I touch, or the only buttons that I push there, I still have the same sounds. But what's changed is they did change the tempo. So if you've not locked in your tempo, that tempo will will go up to whatever that style has, you know, pre-selected there. Okay, so if I want to lock that in. <laughs> Intro is on there. You've got to figure if your intro is on. Okay. So it basically works the same way when you pick song setup. You just have to figure out what don't I like about the song setup that they've picked. Is it the tempo? Is it the melody sound? Or is it the music style? If it's all of the above, I probably wouldn't use song setup the next time, <laughs> right? Or you might use it for a different for a different song. Just remember when you choose a uh, song setup, let's say I go to a, a song setup like Mood Indigo, right? Obviously that's going to be good for Mood Indigo, but I could play just about any medium tempo jazz song that I want to. Maybe maybe Misty or something like that. So keep in mind, you don't necessarily have to play the song for the song setup that you've picked. All right. So hopefully that uh, answers your question there, Hal, and uh, and anybody else who might have been wondering about that. Um, Linda had typed into the chat uh, layered sounds. So this is something that we talked about 
uh, last week, and I I think it's something that um, one, once you know how to do it, it it's kind of easy, but it's not very intuitive on most instruments. Okay, um, when you're using your music styles and style setup, you will run into a lot of layered sounds automatically. And again, layered sounds is just more than one sound. You picture like layers on a cake; it has more than one layer, right? Um, so when you're looking at your melody sounds, a lot of times it will automatically select a layered sound. So for example, if I touch smooth full band, you might be able to hear that that's piano and strings together. And that's the same on the easy one right on up the line. And so it's layered piano along with strings there. All right, if I go to Broadway. Right, it's giving me uh, organ with bells. All right, if I go to, let's see another one here. Latin doesn't do it. I think ballad does. The video is frozen, Brian. Everybody still there? We got kicked off for some reason. Okay, you're back. Well, that's live TV for you. Well, it's still recording. That's good. I don't think we were off for too long. I guess maybe our internet dropped or something. Anywho, we're still here. <laughs> so let me uh, put my video back on spotlight here. So... What I was uh, mentioning before we got kicked off there was I, I'm using ballad and full band, and that's the style called Wonderful World, and that does set me up with a sound that's already layered. I can tell because here's strings was selected for the upper, and then we also had a separate string section under the organs button. Okay, So automatically it's layered a sound for me. <laughs> Okay, but let's say I wanted to layer something on my own. So I'm going to turn off all this stuff. So hopefully you can see here on the right side of my instrument, absolutely nothing is lit up, meaning nothing is turned on, right? So, right, you can't hear anything at all. So here's a uh, pop quiz for everybody that's on here. How many do we got? About nine people or so. Let's uh, let's see what happens if I touch, let's say, piano. What sound am I going to hear on the upper keyboard? Feel free to chime in. Piano. Kathy says piano. Anybody else have an answer? I'll admit, this was a trick question. Now, it should be piano. However... You don't hear anything, right? Even though piano is selected, because I haven't actually said where do I want that piano sound to go. Uh, right? I know. I set you up, Kathy. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> On mine, it would be. <laughs> so, but, but you're right. When, when the piano sound is selected, um, 
you would hear a piano sound. However, you have to tell it where to go. Now, on a two keyboard instrument, such as the Easy 4 or the Easy 10 or above, you're going you're to have uh, two options, right? You're going to have either orchestral on for the upper keyboard or to the lower right of the split. So you have to decide if you're going to set up a sound automatically, or uh, not automatically, but by yourself, if you're going to set something up, do you want it just to go to the upper keyboard or do you want it to go to the lower right of the split, meaning your melody sound on the lower keyboard? Um, for the sake of this uh, example, let's just say we want it on the upper keyboard. Okay, so I have piano selected. With nothing else, you're not going to hear anything. But when I turn on orchestral on, that black button there just to the right of more, now you hear that piano sound, right? Now, if I turned on the lower orchestral to the right of the split, then you would hear it down here and not up there. Right, you just have to tell that sound, that piano sound in this case, where do you want it to go? But we're just going to stick on the upper keyboard for now. Okay, same same thing if I touch strings, you'll hear strings. If I touch brass, you'll hear brass. If I touch guitar, right, whatever sound you touch with orchestral on on the upper keyboard, that's what you'll hear. So we have our piano sound. All right. Now we want to layer a sound. And again, layer just means more than one sound. We want to choose more than one sound at the same time. So piano and strings is kind of a common example, so let's try that. So what you have to do is first you want to select which two sounds you want to use. So let me change this. I've been using grand piano, but let's say I want to do, oh, I don't know. Let's do an electric piano. I like that electric detuned piano. It's kind of a pretty sound. So let's say I want that, and then I'm going to go to strings, and let's say I want, I have a lot of options here. Let's say I want strings ensemble two. Okay, those are the two sounds that I want. So I've selected my two sounds. Now what I have to do is touch one and hold it, right? So again, we're talking about just for the upper keyboard. Touch and hold, and then while I'm holding, touch the second one. So hopefully you can see there, now piano is lit up, strings is also lit up. So you hear both. Okay, let's try another example. Let's say I wanted to do, uh, we'll pick something wacky here. Let's do rock, guitar, and uh, steel drums. How about that? That'll be fun. So again, we touch and hold and then select the second one. Okay, one is a solid, the other is blinking. <laughs> kind of fun, right? So, what if you want to go beyond layering? What if you want to put one sound on the upper, one sound on the lower? Okay, this is, again, something we talked about last week, but I'll mention it again just briefly here. If you want to do that, it's the exact same process that I just showed you. It's selecting the two sounds that you want to use. Okay. The only difference is that whatever sound you want on the upper keyboard, you got to make sure you touch and hold that one first and then select the second one afterwards. So in that example, I was using uh, rock guitar and steel drums. If I wanted steel drums on the upper keyboard, rock guitar on the lower keyboard, I had to make sure I touched more first because that's where the steel drums are touch and hold and then touch guitars All right so now more is solid guitars is flashing but if I do nothing else it's still the same sound that I just had they're both on the upper keyboard so I have to make sure that my orchestral on on the upper keyboard is turned on and orchestral to the right of the split is turned on Okay, now, whichever one is solid is going to go to the upper keyboard. And whichever one is blinking is going to go to the lower. So it's the same process either way. You just have to make sure that both buttons are selected. If you want to layer as opposed to select two separate sounds, you have to make sure that only one is selected. So, for example, if I did this... Right? 
you still hear that layered sound, right? Getting a lot of a lot of mileage on that pentatonic scale today, if anybody knows what that is. But because I don't have the orchestral on-off for the upper selected, no sound is going here, right? It's, both of those sounds are layered to the lower keyboard. Okay? If I did the opposite, if I turn that off, turn this one on, now I have no sound down here, and my two sounds that I selected are on the upper. Okay? Pretty cool. So, good question there, uh, uh, Linda. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Well, but I guess we'll just treat this as a Q&A today. I'll save my class I had planned for next week. <laughs> does anybody else have any questions? Nobody. <laughs> my goodness. Well, I'll come up with my own question then. If you think of one, make sure you interrupt me. Feel free to unmute yourself at, at any time. Okay. So one of the things we were talking about was, oh, sorry, was song setup. Okay. And using different selections there. So we talked about what to do if you don't particularly like one of the aspects of your song setup, whether it's the tempo, whether it's the melody sound or your music style that they picked. Okay. What you might do, though, is go into your song setup, and let's say uh, I'll do a no biz like show biz. Okay, so that's what I've selected on the screen there. Okay, if I just touch a chord, here's what it sounds like. And I'm just listening to the style. What does that style sound like? Well, you can click on your music styles and it'll actually say Broadway, right? That's the one that's selected there. But one of the things you might consider doing is going through some of your song setups and picking songs that you know, you know, Stars and Stripes, Stardust, that's another great one. And instead of just sitting down and playing that song, even if you know the song, you know how to play it, you have the music for it, pick that song setup, select it, touch the first chord, but then think about other songs. What other songs could I use this for? So in this case, I'm playing with a mix and pianist, and it's the style it tells me is candle opera piano. So, of course, it would work well for Stardust. That's the song setup that I chose. But what I like to do is think about, well, what other songs could I play with this? Because, remember, the instrument doesn't know what song you're actually going to play, right? I, I always say that the instruments are very smart, but they're not that smart. They don't know what you're actually going to play. They just know what you have a song in mind, Stardust in this case. And when you go to song setup, you put Stardust, you select it. It says, well, hey. I know a great setup for Stardust. I can I can set up the instrument. But as it turns out, that same setup works really, really well for hundreds or thousands of other songs. Right? So check this out. So I'll play a little bit of Stardust, but then I'll go into a bunch of other stuff.
I, I could keep going and going, but you get the point that there are tons and tons of songs that you can play. And so one of the things that people often think about is, you know, I have to set the instrument up left to right, left to right, right? That's what we're always saying. And that's generally a good rule to go by. You, you know, you start off with the music style. You either put your intro on or not. You select the tempo, select what setup, or if you have to adjust anything over here, that's a great rule to go by is the left to right. However, if you just know, man, I could put on uh, Spanish Eyes song setup, the instrument sets it up just the way I like it, but then I don't have to play Spanish Eyes, right? You can play any Latin song pretty much, right? So, Girl from Ipanema. Or Wave. And of course, I keep going with Latin songs, too. But that might be a shortcut for some of you that, you know, I know how to set it up. But if you want, just go to your song setup and say, oh, I can select Satin Doll, but I want to play, uh, you know, Take the A Train or whatever, whatever it might be. Because there are so many songs that you can play with your song setup. And uh, I don't know if do we have anybody who has uh, an easy one, two or three that's on here? I don't I, know, Kevin, I do. You have, a, you have an easy one, but you also have a sterling too, right? Right. I'm on a one right now. Okay. Well, I was going to say, for, for anybody that might have an easy one, two, or three that might be looking at a four, potentially, um, your song setup actually unlocks some styles that, are, uh, that were exclusive to the easy ten. Like n the no biz like show biz would give you that Broadway style. Aloha gives you the Hawaiian style. So that's that's true for both the easy four and also for the fanfare. So for anybody who has a, a four or a ten that might potentially be looking at a fanfare, um, the fanfare has a bunch of those. We're not supposed to call them secret styles or hidden styles. They're just additional styles that happen to only be unlockable by that song setup feature. So it's really important to go in there. And, you know, I think the easy four has something like a dozen additional styles on it and the fanfare is I think it's like four dozen or five dozen there's a, a bunch of them on there so it really would behoove you to go to song setup and just go through you know and don't tackle all of them in one day but pick two or three that you think oh that might sound cool and you know shadow dancing what what might that be let's see well, I hear proud Mary think well what what does that sound like to me what what would that be good for and you and you know that that's good for that song she'll be coming around the mountains at the train yep she'll be coming around the mountain is the train and that of course could be good for um you know But it could be good for any number of uh, country or bluegrass tunes. Uh, I, I will have to admit that genre is not my <laughs> strong point. But, uh, you know, you could play, um, oh, what else could you play with that one? Well, you could play Marianne if you're like our one student. She loves that one on the train. But, um, you know, Jason does that medley. Uh, I have to get him to show me that lick sometime. But you can you can use any of these song setups for any song, right? If, if, if you're like, uh, I don't know if you guys remember Clement. Does anybody remember Clement who used to work with us? Um, he was a really, really good guy, and uh, he played the accordion, or plays the accordion. And uh, so he knew all these polkas. Well, probably not too many polkas in the song setup. If you happen to be somebody who loves polkas like he did, you're probably only going to find one or two, like Pennsylvania polkas in here. But... How many different music styles for polkas are there? Well, you could play probably a hundred polkas with that one style, right? And that one song setup. You know, so when you go through and you start looking at some of these, you know, one of the things we used to hear with some frequency was, well, you know, the song I really want to play isn't in song setup. Well, to me, what that says is you don't know all the songs that are in your song setup because there might be something that's almost identical to that song that you're thinking of. You just have to think, what genre of music is it, right? 
I go to, you know, King of the Road, how many country songs do you think I could play with King of the Road? A thousand? If I knew a thousand country songs? Right? If you go to Jingle Bells, how many Christmas songs do you think you could play with Jingle Bells? You know, they're so when you go through these, you really can get a lot of mileage out of your song setups because like the Easy 4 and the Easy 10, for example, have a hundred songs in the song setup. But that doesn't mean those are the only hundred songs you can play. Now, if you happen to have a larger instrument, you might have 400, 500, 1,000 song setups. So you have some, some stuff that's maybe a little bit more specific. But the same thing applies, you know. Even if you have a 1,000, think about all the songs that have been written in the last, you know, <laughs> couple thousand years, right? Going back to the, uh, the, the chants all the way up through our, uh, you know, modern music now. There's been so many songs that have been composed. Um, you can't possibly have them all in song setup. But I guarantee that there's something that sounds like the song that you want to play. Does that make sense? So you mm -hmm. can you can go through and find something. You just have to know what that song sounds like. And if you're going through, let's see if I can find one here. Oh, that's a perfect one. Does anybody know the song Hernando's Hideaway? Mm -hmm. Anybody know that song? Yep. I've never heard of that song in my life. Okay. <laughs> I was just scrolling through here and I thought I'll pick one that I have no idea what it is. So I've never heard this song. If I hit select. It selects ballroom wet. So what I hear is Spanish eyes. Okay, so even if you don't know the song, just scroll through, you know, Hello Dolly, how many show tunes could you play with that? You know, Harper Valley PTA, I don't know what that is either. Country. Is it country? Uh, Grandfather's Clock. So there, there are definitely some in here that I've not, not heard of. And a great thing you can do too, you know, I already uh, plugged our YouTube channel, but uh, YouTube is great for going and just looking up some of these songs. So if you have a song in there, you know, Dream a Little Dream. Now, I do know that one. But if you never heard that, you go to YouTube, type it in, Dream a Little Dream. What a, you know, who sang that? And then you'll, you'll probably get some ideas of other songs that you can play. So does anybody have any questions about that? Does that make sense? Something that feels like it'd be worthwhile to spend a little time on just going through? Thank you. All right. You guys are quiet today, man. You're lucky I'm not Joni. Joni would be like, you know, get involved, get involved. <laughs> so that's your song setup tip of the day. That's what I would recommend going through, you know, really exploring the song setups, listening to what the style sounds like, and writing down, right? You always want to write stuff down or, or take a note on your phone. That's what I do normally. You know, if I put on Dream a Little Dream. I could probably think of a hundred songs that, oh man, that would be a good one to play. That would be a good one to play. Or if you think later in the day, maybe you hear a song on a commercial or on, on the radio or whatever, and you think, oh man, that would sound perfect with uh, guitar swing on my instrument. Make sure you make a note of that on your phone or, or on your notepad, whatever, so that you remember to actually look it up. Okay, and my other tip for today is to go through your feature menu. Now here's a challenge that I think everybody should do. And everybody can do this. Um, if you have the button that says feature, okay, go through and find one of the feature options that you have no idea what it means. Okay? And I guarantee, that's the Brian Lewis guarantee of the day. If you go through, there's going to be something in your feature menu that you have no clue what it does. So, keyed bass, for example. You might not know what that does. Drums only. The keyboard touch. Organs sustain. Lower split. I think you know that one. Transpose, you know that one. Orchestral level. Orchestral octave. Right? There's all these options. And, of course, if you have a big window instrument, you got pages and pages and pages of options. Find something that you don't know what it means or what it does and call us. Okay, I we we love to to field questions from you guys, and you've you've paid the money to have these really beautiful instruments, 
And even if it's something that you think you might never use, it's worth it to know what it does. And if you know every single thing that your instrument does, you should be teaching the class and not me because I don't even know what all the, all the features do. And I know the vast majority of them, but there's there's some some of the larger instruments, you know, will occasionally bounce stuff off each other at the store. Like, oh, I didn't know it did that. So that's my challenge to you for uh, your quote unquote homework for the week, right? Is go through your feature menu, find something that you really just don't know what it does and contact us send us an email give us a call you can even stop by the store you know we are open we're not uh of course we're not doing the classes in person and concerts and all that like we normally do but we are open and you know you're you're, you're free to pop in anytime you like and or set up an appointment for a one-on-one -on -one with somebody um but i would really recommend that go through your feature menu see if there's something you don't know because I'm pretty sure there's something on there that you've never heard of or don't know what it does. And there's a good chance that we do know what it does and we could help you out. And it would just be kind of a fun piece of uh, trivia for you for the week. Like, oh, I learned what keyed bass is, you know, even if you're never going to use it. Right. It, it, it's good to know what it does anyway. All right. I'm looking around. Does anybody have any questions? Anything we covered today? This is where Robert says, man, you guys look musically smarter than you did an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's Monday, Brian. I know. <laughs> but, you know, when you're retired, every day is a Friday, isn't it? Or a Saturday? <laughs> yeah, that's all right. <laughs> well, I will switch my camera back here so you can see me. I realized about halfway through the class, I, I didn't even remember to take my mask off. I just had it around my, so if it looks like my beard's getting extra long, that was just my mask. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Linda says, okay, so what is keyed bass? So I will tell you real quick, just for fun here, what is keyed bass? So keyed bass um, is something that most of our students would probably never use. But again, it's good to know what it is. Just, you know, you never know. Um, Keyed bass is a feature, if you go in here, there it is, you can select on or off. Um, if you've ever seen, or may, you may, may have heard me talk about this, this is something back when uh, live in-person gigs were an actual thing, something that I used to do, but keyed bass is when you don't have a bass player in the band, and then you decide to play bass with your left hand. Okay, so if you put on, let me reset the instrument here. If you put on keyed bass, that means that instead of the automatic bass, you'd actually be playing bass with your left hand. Now let me turn off the... Oh, just realized you can't really see on the camera there, but... So, again, not something that our students would normally do because you're playing the chords down there. But if you're on a gig and, let's say, uh, they could only afford uh, three players, and the three players that they chose were keyboards, drums, and saxophone, well, you might have a saxophone player up here. <laughs> All right, and a drummer down there. And then you might get it something that sounds like this for your trio. doing that all day but anyway that's wow. so that's kind of wow. what it would, that's kind of what it would be though and <laughs> now again would our students do that 
probably not. You know, that <laughs> takes a little bit of work to, to do all that stuff. But at least you know what it does. You can you can be scrolling through, and if you have a friend over at the house and they say, what does that keyed bass mean? Like, well, it's not something I'd ever do, but I learned it in class one time, and I can at least tell you about it. Okay. So anyway, that's what it is. So if you, if you ever uh, run into something like that, that you know, that that's what keyed bass does. It's a fun feature for those of us that that do it, and uh, it was uh, probably something that whoever I, I'm guessing it was probably Bill Curry or somebody at Lowry decided to put in because you know we don't normally think of professionals taking these instruments out on a gig, but you might you know you know Jason used to play over at uh, Bella Cucina and you know um, I know Rick who uh, Rick Barham who used to work with us he used to take instruments out for gigs and you know you may want to utilize that feature so it's cool that it has it. Mm. Any other questions for me today? All righty. Well, I'll do some just quick announcements here. Uh, hopefully most of y'all know that we do our variety class every uh, Wednesday and Thursday. So those will be coming up this week. Um, those are 2 o'clock. I don't think we have anybody outside of Florida time, so it's 2 o'clock Florida time. Um, and then on Friday... We have Carrie is going to play a concert for us this week. So you guys all know Carrie. He's the one that has the uh, the big springs on the bench every time he plays. You know, he's like <laughs> this and bouncing around. Got more energy than anybody. Um, great, great player. You may have seen him on our uh, birthday celebration. He, he he doesn't get on Zoom all that much, but he, he's going to be on this Friday for a concert, and uh, that'll be a real treat for everybody. Um, and, of course, we have Joni's class tomorrow. That'll be 11 o'clock right here from the store. And, uh, you know, we're always trying to bring you guys content. That's how we're staying afloat. Um, I will also just mention, you know, we're always looking for referrals. And if there's anybody that you know who might want to try out the hobby, uh, you know, you don't even have to have an instrument. As you guys know, we're, we're not, uh, you know, we're not high pressure or anything like that. We just want, want more students. And that's how we're keeping our business going right now is by doing these Zoom classes. So if you have anybody that you can think of, that might possibly want to, you know, be involved with the hobby of music. I mean, you guys have a lot of fun with it. You can see we obviously have a lot of fun with it. Just, you know, send them our way. Say, hey, you might want to try playing this keyboard. And they'll say, I don't, I don't play keyboard. And they say, well, neither did I before I started. And then now I play all these songs. So um, just give it some thought, you know, if, if there's any. Because, you know, as you know, right now we don't have our kind of traditional methods of, of getting new folks in. You know, we don't, we don't go out into the community. We can't play concerts. Uh, we can't do a lot of the stuff that we used to. So we are relying on some untraditional methods, such as, you know, referrals from our students and such that, um, you know, can kind of help us uh, expose the hobby of, of recreational music to some new people. So if you have anybody that you might know, make sure you send them our way. Um, we can invite them to our Conductor Magic class. We can get them on the concerts if they just want to watch a show on Friday or whatever. So please consider that, and if you have any anybody that might want to do it, send them our way, and we'll uh, we'll get them involved. So having said all that, it's uh, obviously great to see everybody, and we really appreciate you joining us today. And um, yeah, Joni's class tomorrow, variety class Wednesday and Thursday, and Carrie on Friday. So what a week, huh? That's going to be fun. Can't wait. Thank, you. Thank you, Brian. All righty. Well, it was great to see everybody. And uh, we will be back uh, next week for my class at the same time. So feel free to join us then. And uh, if we don't see you before then, have a great week. Have a good day. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.